お前が死のうとお前が死のうとどうでもいいやつ以外は心底どうでもいい Sukuna's connection to Megami is something which we've all been thinking about ever since their first ever battle during the fearsome womb arc. This would be when Sukuna's odd interest in Megami would begin, and we're left with a thousand questions on what Sukuna plans to do with Megami. But with that said, we're slowly beginning to understand why Megami is so valuable towards the King of Curses. But I reckon there's something much greater behind Megami, which could switch the tides of Jujutsu Kaisen. So, how exactly is Megami Sukuna's greatest weakness? But before we unravel that secret, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to stay updated on the latest uploads. This video will contain spoilers from the manga. Now, as for Sukuna's obsession with Megami, I made a video covering this topic quite a while back, and so much has developed since involving both characters. And even in the most recent chapter, we got to see a glimpse of how things could change between Megami and Sukuna with the intervention of Hana Kurusu. Let's find out why and how Megami could be Sukuna's greatest weakness and how the latest chapter links this all together. So, without Further ado, let's get straight in. Megami's potential in Jujutsu Kaisen is the most talked about thing within the community. The way in which Akutami is building up his character feels like there is so much more we are yet to see from him. However, the part in which would completely change the trajectory of Megami's character would be in chapters 8 and 9. When Megami would face off with Sukuna yet again, it'd be a completely one sided fight. Although Megami did display his vast array of Shikigami by using the Ten Shadows technique, it wasn't enough to even put a scratch on the three fingered Sukuna. But it would be in Chapter 9, where Sukuna would take an interest towards Megami, with Sukuna stating, Your Shikigami use shadows as a medium, don't they? With Sukuna following up and telling Megami that he's a wasted talent. But it would be when Megami was just about to unleash Maharaga that Sukuna would take even more interest towards him. But what we've got to keep in mind is how intrigued Sukuna was about Megami's Ten Shadows technique. But what makes things even more crazier would be the chant Megami says at the beginning when he's just about to summon Maharaga. Megami says, Furube Yura Yura. It's noted that this part of the chant is done by Shinto priests and is believed to summon the dead. It's also known as a magic spell of the Ten Sacred Treasures. This part right here caused a lot of chaos in the JJK community, and that was the belief that Sukuna would use Megami to resurrect Sukuna's original body. As for the connection between the Ten Shadows technique, which is Megami's curse technique, and the Ten Sacred Treasures from Shintoism, we understand how Akutami loves to involve Buddhist and Shinto symbolism within JJK, and it's honestly a perfect fit, especially with how powerful these sorcerers are. Anyways, it's thanks to Conscience Delay 6007 on Reddit for breaking down the connection between the Ten Sacred Treasures from Shintoism with Megami's Ten Shadows technique. And by analyzing and breaking down the technique, it will push us closer to why Megami is Sukuna's greatest weakness. Well, from what we've seen of Megami's Ten Shadows technique, is that he can summon ten different Shikigami, with each of them having similar designs to the Toku Sano Kandakara, or which is also known as Jushu Shinpo. These are basically ten kinds of sacred treasures that were handed down by Nigi Hayahi no Mikoto. Which would be the tutelary ancestor of the Mononobe clan. These ten sacred treasures from Shintoism is divided into four classes the first one being two mirrors, the second one being one sword, the third one being four Magadama, which is basically a comma shaped bead. And finally, the fourth one would be the three Hire. These are scarves that women put over their shoulders and hang in front on both sides in the same length. Now, what you guys are seeing are each of the ten sacred treasures from Shinto belief being matched up with each of Megami Shikigami. We first notice that the toad is being matched up with Okitsukagami, which is known as the Mirror of the Deep. Then the next would be Max Elephant, being matched up with Hetsukagami, known as Mirror of the Shore. So those two Shikigami are matched up with two mirrors from the ten sacred treasures. The third Shikigami, which is Eight Handled Sword Divergent Sealer, Divine General Maharaga, would be matched up to Yatsuka no Surugi, which refers to the Eight Hands Long Sword. Maharaga takes up the spot for the One Sword, which is represented in the Ten Sacred Treasures. For this part here, I'd like to take my own approach to it, since I believe that the Great Serpent would be the match for Orochi no Hire. Since the connection between them is the fact that it translates to Snake Repelling Scarf, this would be a part of the Three Hire. Following up would be Divine Dog Totality. This represents both Taratuma, known as Jewel of Plenty, and Chikaishi no Tama, known as Jewel of Turning Back on the Road. Divine Dog Totality would take up two of the four Magadama spots due to Divine Dog Totality being a fusion of two Shikigami. 
Anyway, so far we've covered six Shikigami, but because the theorist behind this was unsure on the other sacred treasures and the remaining three Shikigami links, that would leave us with Ikutama, known as the Jewel of Life, which is part of the four Magadama, then Makaru Keishi no Tama, known as the Jewel of Resuscitation, which is also a part of the four Magadama, then it would be Hachi no Hire and Kusagusa no Mono no Hire, the other two Hire are part of the ten sacred treasures. As for the remaining Shikigami, this would be New, Rabbit Escape and Wells Unknown Abyss. As for what they could be matched up with, I'll leave that to you guys. But we notice how Megami is yet to reveal his tenth Shikigami, which is still a mystery, but understanding this information will be key to realizing the truth behind this intricate theory. So by understanding the 10 sacred treasures, this brings us to the 3 sacred treasures of the imperial family. These 3 treasures have symbolic power in Japanese history, seen as divine artifacts. So the mirrors represent the Yato no Kagami, which is of course the mirror, whereas the sword and the 3 Hirei represent Kusanagi no Surugi, which of course would be the sword, and the 4 Magadama represent the Yasukani no Magatama. The true potential of Megami's technique is totality, a technique in which a Shikigami inherits the energy of another that was destroyed, but the potential of this technique may be greater than expected. Based on this theory, it is possible that Megami's greatest asset is the three sacred treasures, made from the totality technique. Kusanagi no Surugi is a legendary Japanese sword and one of three imperial regalia of Japan. It was originally called Ame no Murakumo no Surugi, which means heavenly sword of gathering clouds, but its name was later changed to the more popular Kusanagi no Surugi, which would mean grass cutting sword. In folklore, the sword represents the virtue of valor. Yata no Kagami, which are the mirrors in ancient Japan, represented truth because they merely reflected what was shown and were a source of much mystique and reverence. In Shinto, the mirror was forged by the deity Ishikori Dome. Both it and the Yasukani no Magatama were hung from a tree to lure out the Shinto god Amaterasu from a cave. Yasukani no Magatama may be symbolic of the shape of the soul. It is likely that Sukuna and some other sorcerers from the past know more about the three sacred treasures and the potential of Megami's technique, due to the fact that during Sukuna's battle with Maharaga, he mentioned how Maharaga is similar to Yamato no Orochi, and the folklore depiction of Yamato no Orochi comes from when the Shinto god Susano killed the serpent with that name and found a sword in its fourth tail. This sword would resemble Mahoraga in the JJK series. So this theory all comes down to Megami's usage of his totality, essentially sacrificing his Shikigami in a specific order to gain the three sacred treasures. If this theory does come into fruition, then these three sacred treasures will most definitely be the decider of Megami's true power, which could potentially put an end to Sukuna himself. All props go to Conscience Delay 6007 for this theory. I'll leave the link to the post down below if you guys would like a better read of this. Anyways, with how Akitami has linked Shinto beliefs into Jujutsu Kaisen, this is completely plausible. We saw firsthand how the sacrifice of Megami Shikigami only results in the ability of his totality, and if pulled off correctly, then we could witness either the three sacred treasures in its depicted form or in the form of Shikigami. My money would be seeing them in the forms of Shikigami, since Maharaga was depicted as a sword in Shintoism. This theory did seem quite complicated, but I tried my best to dumb it down as much as I could, but if I was you, I'd definitely give it a read through. So how does the latest chapter correlate with this theory? Well from all we understand is that Hana Kurusu is using her current body as a vessel, just like Sukuna is with Yuji's. From what Hana Kurusu mentions, is that she'll agree to freeing Gojo, only on the condition that the fallen angel is killed, and that proceeds to Sukuna revealing that he is the fallen angel. However, we do notice that just like Sukuna, she has taken a liking to Megami. So with that said, from the theory we had just gone over, I actually believe that this obsession is all tied down to the three sacred treasures, which Megami could possibly possess. If we take into account the golden age of shamans, Sukuna became such a monster that he was unstoppable, so much so that he managed to live on through the 20 dispersed cursed fingers, as for the time period Hanakurusu existed in was also 1000 years ago, meaning she and Sukuna definitely knew each other, but as for the roles they played is unknown. The eye opener from this chapter was the fact that Hanakurusu is the only other sorcerer from 1000 years ago besides Master Tengen, who also has appeared in the series, but it's odd how they both have an interest towards Megami. I believe from the chapter she was insinuating for Megami to ultimately kill Sukuna, since she probably understands he's got what it takes to kill the king of all curses. And if we take this back to 1000 years ago, I believe that Sukuna was taken down with the power of the three sacred treasures, which Megami could have in his locker. There is still so much mystery revolving around Megami, even though we've seen the development of his character, there is still so much to see from him. But what could Sukuna possibly want from Megami? Could it be his hidden powers or is he seeking something far greater? Sukuna only cares about one person in the series and that is Megami. 
he doesn't even care about his own vessel. I mean, the King of Orcursus is supposed to be the most evil being to exist, yet he shows remorse to a boy that acquires the Ten Shadows technique. What else could Megami be hiding? But with that mentioned, the reason I believe Megami is Sukuna's greatest weakness would have to be the theory of the three sacred treasures, awoken through Megami's totality. These could be the items which Megami could have in his possession at the endgame of Jujutsu Kaisen. This was a bit of a difficult video to make since I had to properly understand the various Shinto artifacts, Megami having an ability which would awaken a new Shikigami or insanely powerful items is totally plausible and could result in the demise of Sukuna. But what do you guys think? Do you reckon that Megami could awaken these three sacred treasures in the future or is his 10th unknown Shikigami going to be the decider? Be sure to let me know down in the comments section below. As always like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one.